Episode 19, Autopilot. In the past, when Natalie asked Ginny to come with her, it was mostly because she didn't like the guy, but had to meet him once. But didn't she just say she was satisfied with this one? What did she want Ginny to do? Natalie excitedly said, That's right. I tell you, tomorrow you're going to be ugly to help me stand out. I like this handsome guy a lot. My life depends on you. Ginny was speechless. How was she supposed to play the ugly role? She was much better at playing the fool. However, since Natalie had spoken with such passion, she decided to cooperate with her plan tomorrow. If this succeeded, then she would have a peaceful weekend. All right, I'll come and help you tomorrow. I'll sit somewhere close, and if you're enjoying yourself, I won't show up. If you aren't, I'll find an excuse to drag you away. Upon hearing her words, Natalie hung up the phone, satisfied. The next day, Ginny woke up early and put on her large clothes. She even carefully put on makeup to make herself seem less attractive. Looking in the mirror at the excessive eyeshadow, Ginny was very satisfied. She looked like a clown. Since she would have to ask Peter if she could leave, she didn't want him to see her like this. She put on a pair of sunglasses to hide her eye makeup. Peter looked at Ginny suspiciously, raising one eyebrow. Why was she dressed like a country bumpkin? What did you say? I said, I have to go out for a while. Can you lend me a normal car? Ginny wasn't very sure of what he would do. Would he agree or not? She looked at the route to the coffee shop she was at yesterday. It wasn't too far from here. Peter put down the pen in his hand and looked at Ginny, amused. I'm sorry, I don't have a normal car here. Ginny was at a loss for words. Was he showing off his wealth? Where are you going? I'll get Lewis to send you off. Since she was wearing sunglasses indoors in the middle of the day, people were sure to be curious about her. No need. If you have a low-profile car, I could use it for a while. She had never seen Peter in a low-key car before, but it was better to ask. If Lewis were to take her there, not only would she be unable to help Natalie, but she would be the center of attention and cause trouble. Peter nodded thoughtfully. Since she was being so coy, he was even more curious about what she wanted to do. Then go to the garage with Lewis and choose the car you want. Although he said this, he winked at Lewis. They were both thinking about her driving skills. Lewis understood and motioned to Ginny. Miss Wilson, follow me. Ginny whispered, Thank you, to Peter and then followed Lewis to the garage. Although she knew Peter was extremely wealthy, she was still dumbfounded when she saw the extremely spacious garage filled with cars such as Ferraris, Porsches, Rolls Royces, and much more. As expected, what made a rich person happy was beyond her imagination. Um, Assistant Anderson, is there anything that keeps a low profile? She felt that if she drove any of these cars on the street, people would gather to gape at her because of the extravagance. She wasn't as confident as Peter when it came to this. Lewis smiled warmly and said, Yes, there's a car here that Chairman Dawson hasn't driven in a long time. As he spoke, he brought Ginny to the furthest corner. Ginny grimaced. A BMW X6 was his lowest profile car. Is there something else more low profile than this? Nope. Ginny gave in to her fate. Compared to all the other luxurious cars, this one could indeed be considered low key. When the time came, she would park a little further away. This car was modified by Chairman Dawson in the past. It has a self-driving function. I'll teach you how to use it. Lewis patiently taught Ginny how to operate the car. He thought that Chairman Dawson's wink 
probably meant that he didn't trust Miss Wilson's driving skills. That would be the most suitable car then. Ginny was very satisfied with how the car was operated. It was very practical high technology. She just had to install it on the phone, link the car via Bluetooth, and turn on the self-driving mode. Then, she wouldn't have to do anything else except get off when she reached her destination. It was perfect. Peter, who was in the study, typed out a string of code on his computer. A page popped up on the main screen. It was Ginny's route. He wanted to see where she was going so secretly. Ginny arrived early, parked the car in an upscale hotel's parking lot, and walked towards the coffee shop. Two people outside the hotel happened to see the car sitting in the parking lot. Jake raised his eyebrows and looked towards his good friend. Don't tell me that my cousin is here. Tom grimaced. Even if God himself comes today, don't you dare try to escape that blind date. You accepted that you lost. You said that you would take whatever punishment we doled out. Jake was dragged towards the coffee shop by his good friend. Last night at the club, they were playing Truth or Dare, and he lost. This was his punishment, and it was to be broadcasted live. Jake sighed. Aren't you guys going too far? It's like, I feel I'm being disrespectful to that lady. What do you mean disrespectful? Since you're so old, dating is very normal behavior. If you're afraid of getting entangled, just say you're incompatible. Jake was still struggling with the decision. He wasn't impressed with the date his friends had chosen. However, Tom didn't have any intention of letting Jake get out of this and pulled him in the same direction as Ginny. Not far away, Ginny frowned and glanced shortly at them, but then returned her attention to her path. Their voices were loud enough that she had a rough understanding of the situation. This kind of deception was disgusting, and in her heart, she was screaming at them. They had the good looks and aggressive nature that came with being rich. Peter wasn't as bad as them. In her heart, Ginny gave Peter a good grade for being a good guy. At least he worked hard every day and didn't do such shameless things. He was much better than the two guys behind her. However, the more she walked, the more Ginny complained in her heart. Why did they seem to be following her this whole time? Had she run into some bad guys? They wouldn't do something in broad daylight, would they? That being said, she'd been robbed in broad daylight a few days ago. This was certainly possible. The more Ginny thought about it, the more scared she became. She quickened her steps, walking towards the coffee shop in a hurry. However, when she arrived, she noticed that the two people got there too. Although she was still a bit nervous, at least there were a lot of people there. Ginny found a seat close to where Natalie had told her she would be, and ordered a cup of coffee. She then quietly waited for Natalie to come over. Soon, Ginny felt that something was not right. One of the two men seated himself at the table Natalie said she was going to be at, and the other guy sat close to her. With the current seating arrangement, Natalie would be trapped in the middle, with one man on either side. Ginny thought about the conversation she overheard, and frowned. This coffee shop was considered mid to high end, so there weren't many people around. There were plenty of empty seats, but the three of them were sitting strangely close together. Also, while the two men came together, they sat separately. This was even stranger. Ginny took out her phone and quickly texted Natalie. Does the person you're dating have a photo? She typed out. Natalie, who was rushing over, saw Ginny's text and laughed. Of course he does. How else would she have been captured by his beauty? After receiving the message, Ginny immediately asked her to send the photo over. She wanted to confirm her suspicions, but the Wi-Fi was slow, and the picture was taking ages to download. When the picture finally opened, Ginny was dumbfounded. She was right. The man was the one sitting at the table Natalie had spoken about. Don't come here yet! As soon as the four words were typed out, Natalie appeared at the door. 
Ginny's finger hovered over the send button for a moment before she clicked delete. Sorry, there was a traffic jam. I'm late. No problem. I just arrived too. Jake smiled like a warm-hearted man, looking completely different from the entitled, cruel man on the road. On the other hand, Tom didn't look that innocent. He secretly took out his phone and prepared to start the live broadcast. Ginny frowned. These two were playing Natalie, but if she rushed over now, wouldn't it make Natalie look worse and embarrass her even more? She probably wouldn't want others to know about this, would she? Jake was handsome and had a sense of humor. Natalie was a woman with a high IQ and good conversation skills. Pretty soon, they were chatting freely. Ginny was more and more confused. After thinking for a while, she stood up lightly, grabbed her coffee, and sat next to Tom. Tom was annoyed by this woman who had suddenly come over. He was about to drive her away when she reached out, blocked the camera, and silently pulled his hand down. Hi, I would be honored to have a cup of coffee with you. Ginny's voice was light and comfortable to hear. Tom averted his eyes. He was the one in the wrong and was secretly recording people. He was caught and didn't want the woman to cause trouble. He replied, It's my honor too. Please, let me pay for your coffee. The live broadcast was completely dark. Those who were eager to watch the show were all waiting anxiously, but they could only hear a few words and couldn't even see any faces. Natalie heard the commotion close by, and she was a little curious, but she was so charmed by what was in front of her that she automatically ignored everything else. Jake felt a little guilty, so he treated Natalie like a real gentleman. The two of them chatted merrily for a while, but the more they were like this, the more uneasy Ginny became. She didn't believe this farce. Natalie and this playboy did not belong together. Tom looked at Ginny sitting beside him and noticed she was frowning. He quickly reacted. Miss, you're so close to me. I can't help but have presumptuous thoughts. Faced with his mischievous smile, Ginny rolled her eyes. Be quiet. You two know each other? The ice-cold voice made Ginny's body shudder reflexively as she looked toward the source. She didn't know when Peter had arrived. Ginny instantly stood up. Chairman Dawson! She looked at Peter's dark face nervously, not knowing what she was afraid of. Tom took turns looking at Peter, and then at Ginny. He spread out his hands, leaned back on the sofa, and said, We're here for a blind date. Do you have any objections? The moment he said this, the two people from the next table turned to look at him. Jake was stunned. He was surprised, but it was also within reason. When he saw the car, he already knew that his younger cousin would be there. Peter, what a coincidence. We went out to have some fun. He didn't know why, but Peter's cold gaze was kind of scary. A blind date? Peter's tone rose slightly. He didn't seem to be overly emotional, but Ginny couldn't help but shiver. At this time, she was extremely aware of herself and what the situation looked like. Peter, don't misunderstand. It's Natalie's blind date. I'm only here to accompany her. Ginny meekly explained this in a soft voice, as if she were the one who did something wrong. However, when she called him by his first name, the three of them were instantly stupefied. Jake was Peter Dawson's cousin, his other uncle's son. He naturally knew what kind of bad temper Peter had. No woman had been so intimate with him before. Moreover, this woman had called him by his first name. He couldn't help but size her up and wonder what was going on. Tom, the sole heir to his family's fortune, never cared about anyone. But he had been friends with Jake for many years, 
and was very familiar with Peter's situation. He was also very curious about Ginny and her relationship with Peter. Natalie was the one who was the most confused. She had seen how Peter treated Ginny and had also heard many rumors about their relationship. Yet, she had never thought that Ginny was involved with him. Peter looked coldly at Ginny. He didn't expect this girl to have so many secrets and come here for a blind date. Good. Very good. <laughs>